Success is the compounded product of daily habits. To be a master in anything, you need to fall in love with boredom. Have you ever wanted to learn something new, been super excited in the beginning, and soon it just fades away? And then you feel bad for yourself because you couldn't do it. The example I just gave you failed because of one obvious reason. You trusted your willpower. And don't get me wrong here, willpower is great, especially when starting things. The problem occurs when you start to trust your willpower in the long run. Sounds familiar? So how can we solve this problem? This is where the power of habits come in. All habits are based on a four-step pattern, which consists of cue, craving, response, and reward. I'm going to use this old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, as an example for beginning to eat healthier. Q. This is the trigger that gives you the initial idea, the first signal. We want to be healthier. Craving. This is the why. You want something because it satisfies you or some other positive feeling. You feel better and possibly live longer when staying healthy. Response. This is the action. What you need to do to get it. You need to start eating healthier, so an apple a day is a good start. Reward. This is the end result and now you are happy. When you have eaten the apple, you feel better about yourself and you are closer to your goal. And then you start all over again. How to form new habits. So now you know how the system works. Let's take a closer look at how we can easily stick to it. Q. Make it obvious. This is where you want to make it physically obvious. Let's say you want to eat healthier. We start with an apple a day. You want to keep the apples on the table for you to see when you go into the kitchen. Craving. Make it attractive and have the apples presented in an attractive way. Maybe use a nice bowl that you like. You can also use a trick that the supermarkets use have proper lighting to make the apples look good. Response. Make it easy. Have the apples washed before so they are ready to eat just off the table. If you like to cut it into pieces, have a knife ready next to the apples. Just make it easy. Reward. Make it satisfying. Go get the best apples you can so the healthy eating also is tasty. The more you like it, the more likely you are going to do it again. This is the reward for doing all the work. Then you just repeat the same system every day. Mission, reward, repeat. To get rid of habits, you should do the opposite. Make them invisible, unattractive, difficult and unsatisfying. A lot of the times our schedule is already very busy and we don't have time to add more habits. That's when we need to remove old habits to make room for new better ones. Try to focus on just one habit at a time. It might feel like you want to improve a lot of different things at the same time, but this usually backfires and you stop because it's too hard. When you have one habit locked in, you can try adding another one right after or before the first one. This is called habit stacking and makes it a lot easier to add habits. A good way to keep track of your habits is some kind of habit tracker. It makes it easier and more fun to have some data about your progress. For example, when I meditate, I use this app called Headspace that records all my progress so I can keep track of what I've done. This itself can be addicting and very satisfying. Don't focus too much on the goal. Instead, create a detailed plan on where you want to go, a system, and focus on that. The goal will come sooner than you ever would have thought. Repetition is key. Self-awareness is one of the key components to making changes in your life. You need to know what you already do in order to change. And the easiest way is to make a list of all your habits. Start with writing all your habits on a list. Then you go through the list and mark a plus sign for all that is positive, an equal sign for all that's neutral, and a minus sign for all the negatives. The idea here is to map out the negative ones so you can start removing them to make up space for new positive ones. Then there are three key things you need to change about yourself for this to work. You need to change your results. What do you want? 
You need to change your habits. What will take you where you want? You need to change your identity. This is the most important. What do you want to be? You need to make habits part of your identity. Choose what kind of person you want to be and make habits around it. This creates a feedback loop. Habits are here for freeing up space for effort. Forming good habits now is a gift for your future self. If something feels too hard, then just start easy. Make yourself only do it for two minutes. And often, this is enough for you to want to do more. Newton's first law of motion states that any object continues in its state of rest or motion unless it is compelled by a net external force, meaning that it's easier to go on than stop. That's why you should just start. Improvement. If you want to be successful in something, you need to get better at it. And in the beginning it might feel that you need to get better fast, but the reality is that you only need to get better 1% each time. 1% per day in a year makes you 37 times better at that thing that you're doing. This is called the compound effect. It's quite easy. The 1% increases the original value every day, so the 1% gets bigger every day. And it works in magical ways. It grows exponentially. It's not about the size of the habit, it's how often you do it. I believe that this is one of the greatest lessons in life. You need to repeat something a lot. This is the code for success. The problem here is that you probably want the results immediately. And that's why many people stop. But there's this thing called the valley of disappointment. And when you start something new and you gradually keep on doing it, there will be a point in time when your growth will seem to explode. And this is what happens when people see these overnight successes. They've done the work before that. And then there is one point that changes everything. And that's when the success begins. So in the end, there are no easy ways out. You need to do the work and create habits will make it a lot easier and just do tiny bits every day. Do not trust your willpower. Motivation is overrated. Environments often matter more. We human beings are driven to choose the most obvious in our surroundings. Change your environment to support your habits and identity. Disciplined people are those who don't put themselves in situation that drain their willpower. I think this is kind of obvious when you think about it, but still we put ourselves out there to the temptations and then we fail at controlling ourselves. So don't put yourself out there. <laughs> the role of family and friends also need to be addressed. We imitate those close to us. We imitate the larger society we belong to. We imitate those we admire. It's always easier to do things with someone who you can share them with. This is where coaches and teammates come in handy, but you can also make a contract with a friend or family member to have some consequences if you fail to do what you are supposed to do. There is also this thing called habit stacking. It's just adding a new habit to an already established habit. Let's say you make coffee in the morning. While wait for the coffee to be ready, you can meditate for 5 minutes. And this way, you also have the reward coming for you when you are ready. This is called temptation bundling. One of the most important things to know is why you want to change and why you want to make new habits. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. Friedrich Nietzsche all addictions create high levels of dopamine. This is a brain chemical that makes you feel good when you wait for some reward and also when you get the reward to reinforce the habit. This is the main compound of human behavior. It can be bad or it can be good. You choose. Most of us are addicted to some kind of dopamine activity every day. This is where the temptation bundling comes in handy. Even if you have a bad habit that you can't or don't want to quit, 
you can use it to your advantage. Let's say you want to be more fit, but you also want to watch TV. You can actually use your TV as a reward. First, you need to do 20 push-ups, and after that, you can watch TV. The point isn't to stop doing all the fun things in life. Let's say you have all your good habits dialed in now and you've been doing them for quite some time. This might get boring. It is important to make things more difficult after time to really enjoy them. There is a thing called flow state and it's simply said when things are a little bit too difficult and not too boring. It's where you are fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus. It's also called being in the zone. Flow state is what you really want to go after. It's amazing. I'll make a video about this soon. And I just want to tell you that this video has been greatly inspired by a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I highly suggest you should read the whole book because I, it, it, it's a game changer in creating habits and a completely new way to see your life in tiny details and the small things really do matter it's a common belief that you need to do big things but tiny small habits will make such a big difference in the long run i hope you learned and got some new insights about habits and your own life and I really hope that you get control over your bad habits and make some great new habits. My name is Mitz, I run this channel. I hope you can like this video and subscribe to my channel if you got something out of this. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. See you again. Peace out.